morning. It is May 19th, Tuesday. We're going to begin today's lesson with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Lord, we come before you today and we are so excited to learn more about Pilgrim's Progress. I pray that you'll help us to see how this story translates to every Christian's life, including our own. Help us to connect to this text and to be changed. Thank you, God. Amen. Here's our verse for the week, guys. It goes like this. It's a new one. Okay, it's pretty quick. I'm going to do it one more time. It's a new one. Here we go. Oh, here we go. Uh, awesome. Guys, pause this, rewind it, play it again if you need to. This is your verse for the next verse quiz, okay? This will be the final verse quiz, and then we're going to do one giant verse quiz of all the verses next week. I'll tell you more about that later. Today we're going to do lesson five. We're going to read two chapters, and you're going to do the same thing we've been doing. Key events and setting, proverb or lesson, summary, response to challenges, and then scripture connections. Here is chapter seven's glossary. There are a bunch of um, names here, envy, Mr. Greedy, Mr. Old Man, pick, thank, and superstition. So some of you have heard some of these terms before. Um, these are all representative of Satan's servants or helpers, and they always want more than they need. Um, obviously, greedy wants more than he needs. Envy um, is upset at someone who has what he wants. Mr. Old Man is an old man. <laughs> and um, pick think. It's an interesting phrase. I have to look that one up. Superstition is always thinking that um, something's going to happen if you do a certain thing. Um, and then it says that they believe in false ideas. So that's superstition as well. Judge hate good. Yikes, that's pretty obvious. He hates good. He's a chief certain of sa servant of Satan. He hates the truth and everything that's good. Lord of the fair, that's Satan or the wicked prince. Vanity fair is a place of worldly pleasures where Satan tempts and persecutes God's people. So we're going to enter vanity fair in our text today. Um, chapter 8 has a few um, terms as well. Demas is somebody in our text who encourages people to go after the things of this world. So this is a warning against loving money more than God. Fair speech is a town of pretenders, liars, and deceivers. So they use their speech to sound fair or good, but it's not. Hopeful is the name of a true believer. God brings him into Christian's life and he walks with Christian. Lot's wife. This represents someone who loves the world most of all. Remember Lot's wife? She looked back. Um, somebody who has a disobedient and greedy heart would fall into this category. Lucre is how you pronounce that next word. It's money or wealth that's gotten by dishonest means. That's just a definition of lucre. Uh, I believe it's a place in the text. Mr. By ends is a false pilgrim of fair speech who uses religion to gain riches, knowledge, high position, and an easy life. Mr. Gripe Man, <laughs> Mr. Hold On to the World, Mr. Money Love, and Mr. Save All. These are false, excuse me, false pilgrims and friends of buy-ends who cheat, tell lies, and pretend to be religious. A plane called Ease, so a plane is like a flat piece of land, right? And the plane called Ease is a place of rest. God actually gives it to Christian on his way to the celestial city or heaven. Okay, let's dive in. If you guys want to read these chapters on your own, go ahead. <clears throat> I'm going to read. We're going to go to Vanity Fair. We're going to start here with Vanity Fair, and we're going to end up right over here today. Make sure you're filling out all these pieces on your exit ticket. Um, and now if you want to pause, read it on your own, go ahead. Otherwise, you can join me. Chapter 7, Vanity Fair. Christian and Faithful kept walking and saw a town ahead. The way to the celestial city went right through this town, which was named Vanity. And this town had a fair set up by the wicked prince and his evil helpers many years before. 
All kinds of delightful things were sold at this fair, such as houses, honors, positions, pleasures, wives, husbands, children, silver, gold, and pearls. These were the same kinds of things Satan tempted Jesus with when he lived on earth. Satan offered to make Jesus the lord of the fair if he would only bow down to him, the evil prince. But Jesus resisted Satan's temptations with God's word and left that fair. The people in the fair wore the finest clothes... Sorry, wore the finest clothes and were busy doing whatever they wanted to do, whether it was right or wrong. They only pleased themselves all day long. The fair was filled with all kinds of cheaters, fools, games, jugglers, and beggars. When Faithful and Christian arrived, people made fun of the clothes they wore. Others laughed at how they talked. Still, others were amazed that they did not want to buy any of the things for sale. People called them fools and troublemakers. You must buy something one man said, frowning at the two pilgrims. What do you plan to buy? We only buy the truth. We are strangers and pilgrims in this world and are on our way to the true home, the celestial city, they replied. Now please let us continue on our journey. The Vanity Fair became people became very angry. They began to beat faithful and Christian harshly. Then they put the pilgrims in a cage where everyone could see them and say cruel things to them. Faithful and Christian patiently sat there. They replied with wise and kind words when people were mean and ugly. Even when the people put chains on them and marched them up and down the streets, the two pilgrims behaved even more wisely. When some people at the fair saw how good and kind they were, they began to take the side of Christian and faithful. This made the group against the pilgrims even more upset. They said the two should die for all the trouble they had caused, so the people brought them before the judge, Judge Hategood. These pilgrims are enemies of the town, they told the judge. They are against our ruler, the evil prince, and have even won over a number of our people to their side. I am a peaceful man, Faithful said, looking at the judge, but I will never serve your ruler, the wicked prince. He is the enemy of the king over all, the one whom I trust and obey. Then Judge Hategood said, Anyone who has something to say about the wicked prince and something bad against Faithful, speak up. Envy, who was jealous of everyone, stepped forward. Your honor, he said to the judge. This man, faithful, is disobedient and argues all the time, and he does not honor our ruler. Superstition spoke next. Your honor, this man said we're all sinful and that what we believe in, and that what we believe in do doesn't please God. Then pick thanks spoke up. I've known this fellow for a long time, he said. Faithful has not only spoken against our leader, the wicked prince, but he said bad things about our leader's helpers, Mr. Old Man, Mr. Greedy, and the others. Besides that, Pickthank went on, he's not been afraid to speak against you, Your Honor, saying that you don't trust and obey God. You rebel and traitor, Judge Hategood yelled, turning to Faithful. Have you heard what these men have said against you? May I say a few words in my own defense? Faithful asked quietly. You deserve to die right on the spot, said the judge angrily. Yes, let's let's hear what you have to say first, so that everyone can see how well we've treated you. I said that anyone or anything in this town that is against God and his word is fit for hell, Faithful said bravely. Now, Lord, may you show me kindness. Then the judge sent the jury out. They soon decided that Faithful was guilty according to their law and sentenced him to death. The people cruelly beat him stabbed him with knives and swords, and threw stones at him. Finally, they burned him at the stake. As soon as Faithful died, a heavenly chariot came and carried him up through the clouds. He was taken straight to the gate of the celestial city, to the clear, bright sound of trumpets. Meanwhile, the one who rules over everything helped Christian escape from the cage where he was kept. Christian quickly left the town of Vanity, Tears were in his eyes as he went on his way, singing this song about his friend Faithful. Well, my friend, you spoke up for the king. Now in heaven his praises you'll sing. Though they killed you, Faithful lives on. From the Lord's side you'll never be gone. Okay, that was chapter 7. Now we're on to chapter 8. It's Hopeful Joins Christian. Christian walked away from Vanity Fair, but he wasn't alone for long. A man named Hopeful left Vanity to catch up with Christian. He had seen and heard Christian and Faithful. He knew they spoke the truth and decided to go over to their side. He met up with Christian and promised to be his companion on the narrow way. 
They walked along and soon came to a man named Mr. Byans. Where are you from? they asked. I'm from the town of Fair Speech, he said. My friends and family are very rich people and have a very comfortable life. Byans was a proud man and loved his high position and easy life in a town where, sad to say, people tell lies all the time. Byans continued, In fair speech, we are very religious, but not as strict as some people are. We don't believe in a religion that means you have to go through hard or dangerous things. We, and we like being religious when life is really easy, especially when other people approve of us. Now, Christian had read in the Bible about people who are not the king's true servants, so he said, We can't travel together then. If you go with us and follow the king, you must go through hard times as well as easy. And you must be willing to follow Christ, whether you are poor or rich. Don't force me to believe the way you do, said Byans. Let me walk with you and do what I want. Not a step further unless you change your ways, Christian said firmly. Very well, then, answered Byans. Go on alone. I'll follow what I believe and wait until someone comes along who thinks like me. Soon Byans was joined by three friends from his school days, Mr. Moneylove, Mr. Hold On to the World, and Mr. Save All. Their teacher, Mr. Greitman, had taught them how to cheat, tell lies, and pretend to be religious. These friends used their reason to twist God's words to defend the wrong things they believed. Who are those two men? Mr. Byan's friends asked. Oh, they're pilgrims also, replied Byan's, but not our sort. If you disagree with them, they won't have anything to do with you, and they follow their king in all kinds of weather. They risk their lives for God and stay on the path even when it's dangerous. I prefer to wait for good weather and to make sure that I'm always safe. Byans and his friends caught up to Christian and Hopeful and called out, Let's talk some more. What's wrong with using religion and acting religious so we can get rich and have an easy life, if that's the only way we can do it? Christian said clearly, Having money isn't a sin, but it's wrong to go after Christ because you hope that you'll get rich by following him. Only those who truly are against him would try to do that. The men were shocked at his answer and said nothing. They didn't walk with Christian and Hopeful anymore. Christian and Hopeful kept going across a plain called Ease, where they soon traveled in peace. Soon afterwards, they came to a hill called Lucre. A man named Demas cried out, Come over here and I'll show you a rich silver mine. With a little hard work, you may get rich. Let's go and see. Said... Hopeful as he started to turn off the path, but Christian pulled him back. No, he said, I've heard of this place. The ground is shaky. Many have fallen into the mine and have been badly hurt or killed. Then he called to Demas. Isn't the place dangerous? No, not really, if you're careful, said Demas, turning red because he was lying. Please come and see, he added with a quick smile. But Christian said firmly, your silver mine is a trap for those who go after it. You've turned away from the narrow path and you're an enemy of the king. Besides, the king would hear the news if we left the narrow path for you, and we would be ashamed when we see him. Demas kept calling out to them to come over, but the pilgrims went on their way. They said, I bet Byans and his friends will go to Demas. Sure enough, a little while later, Byans and his friends came up and went right over to Demas. They were never, ever seen again. Perhaps they fell into the pit or died in the bottom of that mine. Soon, Christian and Hopeful came to a place where a strange white statue of a woman stood by the roadside. Her face was turned away from the path. Written above her head were the words, Remember Lot's wife. I know what this is, Christian said. God turned Lot's wife into a pillar of salt for disobeying his instructions not to look back when the wicked city of Sodom was destroyed. She is both a warning and an example to us, Hopeful realized. I'm glad we didn't go off the path when Demas called us. We can thank God for warning us, and we must never forget it. Then the narrow path went right along the bank of a lovely river. There were trees with delicious fruit and a pretty green meadow filled with lilies and beautiful flowers. God had put this delightful place here for pilgrims who had been through many hard trials. Christian and Hopeful, tired from all their travels, rested in this peaceful spot. While there, they drank cool water from the river. They ate fruit. They used the tree leaves God had provided for medicine. They sang songs of joy and praise to the king. And each night they lay down in the meadow and slept safely. After many days and nights of rest, food, and peace, the pilgrims felt strong and healthy once more. So they went on their way, leaving the beautiful valley behind. 
All right, complete your work. I'll see you tomorrow, guys.